You're like the calmest driver. You never get mad, but then today, that van was in front of you and it just irritated you so much you almost ran him off the road. Maybe you have a messed up gut. All right, so road rage may not be like indicative of a messed up gut, but uh, if you're looking at the big picture, maybe. So here are three mental signs that your gut is out of whack, that you might have some microbiome dysbiosis. So first off, we have to look at the two ways that our gut communicates with our brain, and I'll make this very short. Okay, the vagus nerve is the main one. Okay, the vagus nerve is a big nerve that connects our gut all the way up to our hypothalamus and also to our limbic system, which is like our decision, like emotional driver. So if we have a messed up gut, that can very much signal our brain to be messed up too. The other side is hormones. Now that also has to do with our nervous system because our gut communicates with our central nervous system. That affects our serotonin production, our feel-good neurotransmitter, which therefore affects the cascade of hormones we produce. So at the end of the day, it all comes back down to the nervous system because we have 100 million nerve cells within our gut that are all receiving signals from our gut bacteria. So anyhow, let's jump right in. Now the thing to know is if you have one of these, it doesn't mean you have dysbiosis, but if you have all three, it makes sense to maybe look at gut dysbiosis and start having some probiotic intervention or maybe just making some changes with the fiber that you consume to try to make a change because it's an inexpensive way to make a change. And if all the ducks line up, then well, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, then maybe it's a duck. Okay, so the first one is insomnia. And this needs to be like insomnia that sort of came on a little bit randomly. Maybe you never experienced insomnia before, but then you had a bout of stress and it just cascaded, right? It triggered it. Well, check this out. There was a study that was published in the journal PLOS1 that found that there was a very powerful positive correlation between a diverse microbiome and sleep efficiency and sleep time. I'm a bigger fan of sleep efficiency. Okay, sleep efficiency is where you fall asleep fast, you hit your restorative phases of sleep fast, and you maybe don't need as much sleep time because you're efficiently sleeping. So a good diverse microbiome is associated with that, but that doesn't tell the full picture. Let's dive in more. They found that specifically a richness in bacteroidetes was associated with sleep efficiency. Bacteroidetes is also the bacteria that's associated with relatively lean people and just fit people in general, but let's keep on moving. They also found that bacteroidetes and actinobacteria, like when they were in more diverse forms, there was an increase in gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA. If you've ever heard of GABA as a supplement or anything like that, it allows you to be more relaxed. So we tilt towards that GABA scale, which means we can fall asleep easier and stay asleep easier and just be calmer in general. But then there was a study that was published in the journal Frontiers in Neuroscience. This was pretty wild. Okay, they took rats and they put rats on a regular chow diet or a chow diet plus some prebiotic fiber to help out their gut bacteria. They found that when they added the prebiotics, they ended up having much more in the way of non-REM sleep. Now you might be thinking that REM sleep is the restorative sleep, but it's the non-REM sleep that is really the restorative and regenerative sleep. REM sleep is more like defragmentation, kind of a different world. So, hmm, interesting thing there. But then when they exposed these rats to stress, they found that they were able to have sleep rebound much better. So if they woke them up, they fell asleep much faster. Or if they exposed them to stress during the day, it didn't affect their sleep as much, made them more resilient. So if your gut biome is out of whack, well, you're not resilient enough and little things are going to wake you up. The number two one is, are you just in a cruddy, sour mood all the time? Remember, 90% of our serotonin is made in our gut and 50% of our dopamine is made in our gut. Now, a polite nod to the fact that the serotonin made in our gut is not always the same serotonin that we use in our brain. It doesn't always enter, but a good portion of it still does. So let's look at this a little further. There was a study that was published in the journal Gastroenterology. It took a look at healthy women with no issues, okay? And it gave them yogurt, which obviously had like prebiotics, probiotics in it. It gave them um, milk along with a light probiotic supplement, and then it had a non-intervention group. And they did a bunch of like brain imaging and scans and everything like that. And they gave them these doses for two times a day for four weeks. They found that the women that had the fermented milk, okay, that had the yogurt, right? They ended up responding to stress much better. They remained much more calm with an emotional task than the group that did not have intervention. Pretty wild, demonstrating that having a more diverse microbiome and taking care of that 
made you more resilient and less likely to maybe be in a cruddy mood. So yeah, you can add these things in. By the way, the probiotic that I recommend is a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. It's called a synbiotic. The one that I use is called Seed. If you check out the link down below in the description after this video, you can check them out. There is a code you can use, Thomas15. It'll save you 15% off as well. So I highly, highly recommend them. You've probably see me talk about them a couple times in my videos. I just really like the way they're pioneering a lot of the research when it comes down to probiotic research and just overall gut biome research. They are really becoming one of the leaders, which is phenomenal. They also have this thing called Seed University where they educate kind of the masses on the microbiome. But anyway, there's a link down below. It has a capsule inside a capsule. So if you look at the footage, it has like a little teeny capsule inside a bigger capsule. So it breaks down in different stages of your gut, which really can potentially help getting the right kind of bacteria there. So check them out and use that code to save a couple bucks down below in the description. Here's something kind of wild about the adrenals though. A lot of times we think about adrenal fatigue and all this and that, and I'm kind of a believer that adrenal fatigue doesn't necessarily exist. I feel like we have possible, uh, maybe some degree of adrenal insufficiency, but more so it's beyond just that. But there is a connection between the gut and our hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. We found that the gut microbiome can influence it to make it more dysfunctional where it's producing more cortisol. That doesn't mean that our adrenals are burnt out, but it means that for whatever reason, this dysfunction and this poor communication between the hypothalamic pituitary and adrenals is making it so we're pumping out cortisol and remaining stressed out or feelings of stress even when we're not, which can definitely affect our mood. I mean, you're telling me if, if you're stressed out that you're not going to be calmer on the road, right? Like, come on, you're stressed out, you're going to be the kind of person that's angrily yelling at the slow van in front of you. Sorry, I'm picking on vans, just always the vans, right? Sorry if you drive a van. Then the number three mental sign is going to be fatigue, which I'm not talking about getting tired at two or 3 p.m., I'm talking about waking up and just staying tired and no amount of coffee having an effect, which gets confused with adrenal issues, but it's really completely different. Now it's kind of interesting though, if you look at the correlation, although it doesn't always equal causation, people that have irritable bowel syndrome, like an inflamed gut, often have fatigue and vice versa. People that often have fatigue, if you cross-reference, a lot of times they end up having an inflammatory bowel issue, inflamed gut. Well, what's going on there? Well, it turns out that a diverse microbiome produces more butyrate. Butyrate is a food that our gut cells eat, okay? And if our gut cells don't get enough of this food, they become weak. And if they become weak, we end up with an inflammatory response within our gut, specifically interleukin-6, but that doesn't matter right now. So that inflammation makes it so that the signaling is out of whack. It decreases the activation of what's called the basal ganglia, which has to do with our emotion, it has to do with our motivation, it has to do with our drive and our motion, which is so powerful. But then even more so, it disrupts. When you have this inflammation, it creates this fog, so there's not this signaling with dopamine. Now dopamine is what allows us to have effort to do anything. If we are not producing enough dopamine or dopamine signaling is off, that means we have to work even harder to do the most minute task. Okay, that could be going to the gym, that could be picking up and doing the dishes, or it could be getting out of bed. It literally comes down to that being, being that fragmented. So if our dopamine system is not communicating well because we have a lot of an inflammatory response occurring starting in our gut, that can make us literally fatigued because our body doesn't have the motivation or the effort to even get going and doing things. It's not just about going to the gym and motivation that way. So when you combine these three things and you look at, okay, so I had some onset of insomnia. Uh, my mood just shifted. Like I don't handle stress well, which can also go with insomnia, but then I'm seriously fatigued all the time. Like I'm not just like two, 3 p.m. crash. I'm like, it, no amount of coffee is getting me through this. It just seems logical that if you started adding some prebiotic fibers, you started paying attention to your gut diversity, that maybe it's an inexpensive thing to test before you start going down all these crazy rabbit holes and spending a ton and ton of money. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I will see you tomorrow.